Well, it's estimated that almost 200 million children around the world work in hazardous environments. As part two of our series to mark the World Day Against Child Labor, Al Jazeera returned to a charcoal factory in Manila in the Philippines, where dozens of children work in dangerous conditions. Jamel Allen Dogan first visited the factory two years ago and went back to see if conditions have improved. 12-year-old John Simbahon says he's got no time to play. Every day for the last four years, he's been here alongside his mother, making charcoal for less than three U.S. dollars a day. With what I make, we get to buy food. It's good because I get to have coffee in the morning before coming to work. I dream of becoming a policeman one day so I can help my community. But he doesn't really believe it will happen. His mother, Gloria, says she has no choice with six other children to feed. I feel guilty. This is not the life I dreamed for him. But we simply do not make enough money. Life is not easy here. More than 200 children live and work here. They make charcoal from wood scavenged from nearby garbage dumps. They're exposed to toxic emissions. Many suffer of respiratory and heart problems. The United Nations says this is one of the worst forms of child labor. Across the country, more than three million children are working in hazardous conditions like this. That amounts to 10% of children in the Philippines. The majority of these children are young boys. We were here two years ago. We interviewed children who back then dreamed for a way out of poverty. When he was sworn into office in 2010, President Aquino has promised to eliminate child labor by 2016. But the number of children out of school and in dire conditions like this has not declined. His government admits expectations must now be tempered. We have taken steps, the uh, Department of Labor and Employment have take, has taken steps to ensure that uh, child labor where it is uh, should be uh, reduced, uh, a commitment made by the president. The country's economy has been growing since, but the growth does not seem to be inclusive. And the number of children out of school and in dire conditions like this has not declined. We have to contend with one, population growth. Um, the government also is still struggling with the strategy of inclusive growth. And then you also have a series of calamities that have actually affected the Philippines. The charcoal village is called 105, just among the hundreds of impoverished villages across Manila. They call it for three days. It has become a tourist attraction. For those who come here, this is a world far too surreal for many to believe. But not for the children working here. This is reality, and one that's proving very hard to escape. Jamal Alindogan, Al Jazeera, Manila.